Mr. Patrick lives in Connecticut. He is a direct descendant of the captain. He was unable to attend today, so in his stead, I will fill in for him. Captain Case was born on November 14, 1822, in what was then the town of Levant, which is now Kanduska. He graduated from Bowdoin College in 1848. From there, he moved to Ohio, where he studied law. When his brother died, his father requested that he return to the town to help take over the farm, which is located behind that grove of trees over there. He returned to here in 1852, the town of Kanduska separated from Levant and Glenburg. The captain was dead set against it. He thought it was a bad fool. But once it occurred, he then said bygones are bygones. He became very, very active in town politics. He was twice select man of the town. He was town treasurer. He was a member of the school board, amongst his other attributes. When the war broke out, in 1862, he felt it was the thing to do and he enlisted in the Army. He wound up in what is now known as the 22nd Maine Regiment of Volunteers. Due to his reputation and the approval of the men around him in the company he was in, he was elected as company commander. That automatically made him a captain. The junior officers during the Civil War, most of them had no military training whatsoever. They were appointed. There was a very lack of junior officers. The senior officers were West Pointers or men who had come up through the rank, but the junior officers were all, all just common people. They learned that trade while they were there. He served along the Mississippi, New Orleans, in that area. He was in front of Port Hudson, Louisiana, where he had been involved in two frontal attacks on the fort to no avail. He woke up one morning on the 6th of July, 1863, <clears throat> feeling fine. He took breakfast with the officers. By 8 o'clock that morning, he was beginning to feel a little poorly. By 10 o'clock that morning, he was very ill. At noontime, he consented to see a surgeon. By 8 o'clock that evening, the man was dead. What he died of was what they called at the time congestive fever. You can draw your own conclusions as to what that may have been. His body was then sent to New Orleans, where it was embalmed, and returned to Kanduska for burial, and he now lays at rest there. At this time, it gives me great privilege to present to you Major General Earl Adams. The general is the adjutant, state of Maine. General. Thank you, Captain Crofton. Good morning to you folks, and uh, it's great to see so many people come out and to bring young people with you to honor uh, Captain Case and the 58 other uh, individuals that are that are here at this cemetery uh, from our Civil War days. It's, it's extremely important that we not forget uh, what these people did and what their follow-on uh, military people did for this state and this nation uh, over the years. And I think it's particularly timely uh, in light of the fact that obviously Memorial Day was uh, just celebrated a short time ago. Uh, and on that uh, Memorial Day, Governor King and I had the opportunity to go up to uh, Burnham and participate in the Medal of Honor uh, Memorial uh, dedication for Claire Goodblood, who gave his life in the Korean War. And uh, speaking of the Medal of Honor, it's interesting that we honor 59 people here today. And in the Civil War, uh, Maine had 53 individuals who were recipients of the Medal of Honor. We've had a total of 76 throughout the history of the state. But again, 53 of them uh, were in the Civil War. And again, I think it attests to the, uh, the unfortunate violence that was uh, involved uh, in the Civil War. 
Uh, obviously, uh, you know, one of the more well-known recipients of the Medal of Honor in the Civil War, that being General Joshua Chamberlain. So I think Maine has a distinction in the way of having uh, that one of the very first recipients of the Medal of Honor in Chamberlain. Maine also uh, is in the unique position of having the most recent Medal of Honor recipient. Uh, Master Sergeant Gary Gordon from Lincoln, Maine, uh, gave his life in 1993 in Mogadishu, Somalia, as he uh, gave his life in an effort to rescue a helicopter crew that had been shot down uh, at that time. But again, I, I think it's, it is significant that, uh, that we do honor these folks. I think the fact that uh, myself and uh, Specialist Dalton over here represent, I think, the military descendants of Captain Case and the other 58 folks, uh, that, uh, Civil War soldiers, uh, that, that you are honoring here today. And it's interesting to see the similarities uh, between the units and the soldiers of the Civil War and today, because most of those units that were formed at that time were formed with the authority of the governor. A lot of our volunteer units from Maine and the other states were organized with the approval of the governor, and that is still the case today. Even though we may have a stronger federal tie-in to Secretary of Defense Bill Cohen, whom I'm sure a lot of you know, and, and the military establishment, the fact remains that no military orga organizations uh, are formed in the state of Maine uh, without the approval of the governor. He is the commander-in-chief, and it makes no difference uh, the fact that he has that state role. Uh, he still has the authority uh, over the military units until such time that, uh, that we are federalized. And, of course, we still carry on that, that dual mission of the military force to be available to the state or the nation. And last fall, a lot, as a lot of you may know, again, some of the direct military descendants uh, of these people uh, from the Skowhegan area uh, served a period of time in Bosnia in uh, the Stabilization Force mission over there. And of course, uh, back in January, a lot of you all remember uh, what happened at that time as far as the weather in the state of Maine. And again at that time, the governor turned to the National Guard and uh, said we can use your help, and, uh, and we were proud to do that. But again, we're very proud to, uh, as I say, be the direct military descendants of the people that we honor here today. I appreciate the opportunity to come up and spend some time with you. I salute Captain Trafton, his folks, and all of you for taking the time to honor these people so that we don't forget uh, what they and what all the veterans have done and will continue to do for the state of Maine. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, General.